Please note that the views, information, and opinions expressed during this webinar are solely those of the presenter and not and do not necessarily represent the official policy or position of the Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection or the City of Chicago. At this time, I will now turn this webinar over to Faith for us to begin. Good morning, everybody. We're so happy that you took time out of your busy schedules to join Stacy and I as we introduce you a bit to our process around equity-centered innovation. As Stella mentioned, this will be interactive about halfway through. Um, we're going to tell you a little bit about our background, about Pinpoint, walk you through a little bit of a case study, and then we're really going to um, open it up to an interactive activity that we'll all do together. Um, so that hopefully it gives you a little bit of experience, practice around the process so that you can then um, leave this webinar and start to apply it to your own individual business organizations and teams. With that said, I'll, I'll pass over to my business partner, Stacey. Perfect. Um, thank you all for being here. We know it's a busy time of year, so we really appreciate you taking a quick hour out of your day to, to be with us. Um, like they said, I'm going to start with just a little bit about us. Um, we truly started Pinpoint on this philosophy. We had seen too much that business leaders were making decisions around the table based on what they thought thought their audience wanted um, instead of really going out into the world and hearing firsthand. Um, to give you just a little bit of background, Faith and I, actually both of us, born and raised here in Chicago, the Chicagoland area. Um, we met each other about 15 or so years ago um, at a innovation um, consultancy here in Chicago. Um, and uh, we both come from very different backgrounds, um, which we believe really helps inform the work that we do today. So I actually come from an architecture background. Um, Faith comes from an acting background. And we found each other um, at an innovation consulting firm, coincidentally, where we really got to work together closely and define processes that allowed us to go out into the world, deeply understand um, the humans that we were designing for and create businesses, create opportunities, create spaces, physical products, um, brands, out, uh, digital outputs that were built on the need of those audience that we were researching. Um, our purpose, so we are truly on a mission to create more inclusive communities using what we call equity-centered innovation. Here's just a little stats of why we believe this is such important work in the world. The fact that 71% of consumers prefer buying from companies that value diversity and inclusion. 42% um, of people who are LGBTQ plus report living in unwelcoming environments. Um, black women are three to four times more likely to experience a pregnancy related death than white women. The list truly goes on. And we believe that it is time to start unpacking these data points and figuring out solutions to really switch and change the story. Um, so we essentially work with leaders all across the country, although we do love to focus so much of our work here in Chicago um, with those leaders who care enough to listen to the voices of their audience, whether or not they look like or uh, think like or value like them. Um, and we tend to work with clients that are on two ends of the spectrum. They're either in this aha moment they have an idea, something worth exploring. Um, maybe they sense a shift in their industry and they want to seize the moment. And we will go in and we get the incredible job of being able to live in the shoes of their audience. So we will physically go out into the world. We will go to people's homes. We will live and see their pain points in real life and come up and identify on the aha side, um, validate if their idea, their eureka moment has some legs and if it's worth spending their dollars pursuing. On the other end of the spectrum, we also help clients in these oh no moments. Maybe they've hit some bumps in the road, they're losing sales, they are not getting repeat customers at the rate that maybe their competitors are, and they really want to understand why. Why is that the case? Um, and we work on both of those spectrums through these kind of four columns. Um, we start almost every single process with quantitative research really digging in and understanding the data points. So that 15% of X, um, because we know that we need that data to identify the haystack, but well, data only tells us so much. And so what 15% of people prefer X salsa over Y salsa, what the heck do we do with that? 
that is where our qualitative research comes in. And that's where we go out in the world. We isolate that 15% and really talk to them to understand why they're choosing A over B. Um, we also host a slew of innovation work sessions with, uh, with those change maker leaders that we work with. Um, and then last but not least, we go through some design strategy processes, which we're gonna work through with all of you today um, to unpack some opportunities for businesses to really make an impact in their world. Um, I'll just end with this before diving into a little quick case study, um, really about our approach, because this is going to focus the activity that we're all going to do together today. It is so easy for all of us to focus in on our specific industry, on our sector, even just within the offering that we are serving to our audiences. But in reality, us as consumers in the world, we are not in our banking mode and then in our coffee mode and then in our work mode. Everything is so intertwined now. The fact that I can deposit a check essentially while I'm commuting on the L in the morning means that all of these industries are now overlapping. And so for us, it is really important to start with our audience's lifestyle, uncover what they are doing outside of the industry that we're working in, um, so that we can learn from those opportunities and what brings them joy or efficiency or saves them time in a day. And then how can we take those as inspirations to really refine the offering and the services that we are providing in the world? So with that, I'm going to show a very, very quick um, case study that was with uh, the American Dental Association. So they came to us with this, oh no, um, they are an association for dentists. You probably have seen them on, you know, ADA recommended, whether it's on a toothbrush or toothpaste, um, but they really are an association for the profession and the profession is changing drastically. This is currently the very first time within the last five years that the majority of dentists are minority demographics. And they knew that they needed to be more inclusive in order to retain their members. And they really didn't know where to begin. So when we showed up, Almost their entirety of their board was white men, um, and the majority of all of the dentists in their uh, membership were not. And so they knew that they needed to go out, they needed to talk to their members and really understand before they continued to lose membership, how could they readjust their offering to show up for those new and refined dentists. So um, we were actually very uh, grateful that they had done some research already and had identified that there were um, a few driving behaviors that were impacting a dentist choosing this profession to begin with. Um, all the way on the left-hand side, we had the driving behavior of helping their community. We called them our all-star non-members, but they were the ones that became dentists because they wanted to go out and make an impact in the world. It was very different than our frugal focus members who most likely came into this industry to make sure that they had the lifestyle that they anticipated, but going through all of their uh, college and the amount of debt that is built up from going through a dental um, practice, they are in this moment of just trying to realize how they can relieve themselves to the amount of debt that they have uh, accumulated over time. Um, and then the last on the right-hand side is our steadfast member. And this is the one that's really looking for a work-life balance. They became a dentist because they saw that maybe they could adjust their hours as they wanted and needed so that they could show up for their family. They could have a family. Um, they could go on vacations as they wanted to, but also uh, work a life that they really enjoyed and loved. So we took these different audiences and we went out in the world and we found them and we recruited them and we actually went all across the country to meet with them one-on-one -on -one in person um, so that we could unpack what about those driving behaviors really impacted what they needed from an organization or an association um, to make an impact in their lives. This is just a little brief background of what some of our research looks like and feels like. Um, we walk them through a journey starting from pre-dental school, how they even decided that they wanted to become a dentist, all the way into retirement. And we have them map out those high points and those pain points along the way. Um, and then this is kind of the exercise that we're all going to be doing today. Um, we, from those conversations, really unpacked their lifestyle beyond just being a dentist to learn what are the other um, services, programs, organizations that they were a part of that really helped their lifestyle. 
Some of the things that showed up were Weight Watchers. There was an app called Peanut for New Mothers. And so we started to take these um, services and brainstorm around how we could, as the ADA, show up in a very different way that aligned with how these organizations were showing up for those dentists in their lifestyle. Um, this is just a few of the things that we heard. What we found really fascinating was even if I am in this mode as an all-star member where I am out there helping my community, that still looked very different based on who the type of dentist was. For a woman, that tended to look like, I think uh, if I just saw uh, any company emphasize um, that this is something that they care about, going out and uh, helping their communities, that they would think it was impressive. And that looked very different from... Um, an owner, let's say, who owns their own practice um, and how they were interpreting it. So for us, we take all of those learnings, all of those insights, all of those quotes. It very much looks like a, um, what is the- Beautiful mind. Beautiful mind, yes, uh, on, a, on a wall. Um, and we find these really big opportunities to start to ideate new opportunities against. So we always start with the behavior, we unpack the why, and then we come up with these how might we. So in this case, how might the ADA celebrate dentists who put healthcare first by creating a culture driven by care and not money? Um, this I, we thought was such a strong quote, the younger generation needs a purpose for what we are doing. Money is only a piece of it. The mission of a company is stronger. And so from there, we take those concepts. Um, this one was actually a global giving. So um, one of the dentists we had talked to, one of the ways that they give back outside of dentistry um, is through this global giving stories. And it's this website that has all of these stories of people who have really made impacts in meaningful ways throughout different community organizations. And then you can find the ones that resonate most with, most with you, filter through them, and then participate in a way that's really meaningful. So we took that concept and then we started to using that, how might we, a brainstorm how we could show up with um, opportunities for the ADA. This was one of them. It was called the Giving Network. It was kind of a plug and play program that reduces barriers to allow members to align and engage with communities and causes that were important to them. Um, and then we go through an exercise with our leaders to really understand, is this an opportunity that is absolutely worth pursuing? It's going to um, drive the retention and the um, renewal of our members. Maybe it will, or absolutely not, it, it will not. So this is one of our kind of maybes, and we put it in the maybe pile, and all the ones that are hard yeses are the ones that we pursue. Um, and this is kind of that a little bit of a, the exercise of what that looks like when we're starting to map out um, all of the concepts we're, we're actually going to walk through with this little activity for you. So with that, I'm going to throw it over to Faith to get us awesome. rolling. So we also recognize that we're all on a, a time crunch here, being respectful of your busy schedule. So we recognize that we just talked at you for quite a bit and dropped a lot. Um, please know that we're, this, as uh, Stella said, will be recorded, but we're also uh, totally willing to share this PDF so that this practice you can put into play a little bit more. Um, and as we all know, as we practice a little bit more, the more it becomes clear. But now we'd love to just, you know, open this up for us to do together as a little bit of a design thinking activity together. So um, what we're going to do is share and practice the tools that we just really quickly went over so that we can start to better understand the behaviors of the audiences that you serve. Because once we understand those driving behaviors, which make them choose product A over product B or sign up for this service and not really resonate with the competitor service, that's where we can start to ideate those touch points so that we can show up in ways that our audience cares about versus what we might be making assumptions based on what they we think they care about. So because we know we're all coming from many different career backgrounds, we might be running different organizations in different industries, play different roles, and even be at different points in our business journey, we're going to try to unify us by spending the next bit. Um, you just got a new job and you're going to be a realtor for a bit. So all of us are going to put on our realtor hat and start to brainstorm through that industry lens. We promise it'll start to connect dots of just at kind of the 30,000 foot view of the process of how then you'll take that and internalize it via the industry and audience that you serve um, directly. So now that we've all gone to realtor school and are out in the world practicing, let's just kind of, again, ground ourselves in the three simple steps that we're going to do that Stacy walked us through via our process and the case study. So 
together, we're going to start to just talk about unpacking those behaviors. And this is really important where it's just volume. So think about quantity over quality at this stage. So anything that comes to mind when we get to the step of what we think might be a reason for that behavior, feel free to drop it in the chat and we'll start to populate our, our mural board here together. Then after we have lots of motivations, all those kind of drivers of the behaviors, we'll start to cross pollinate and intersect those with some existing products and services that are, are out in the world that might at first glance not feel like they're associated to real estate and that's because they're not and by design, but they do intersect with those behaviors that we're talking about. So we wanna then talk about how does that behavior and this interaction outside an ideation process then influence us as realtors. And then the last part that we'll get to is the prioritizing concepts. So again, this is a piece that we will do very quickly, but we will hand you this framework as that's one of the more important parts as you do this on your own, investing, deciding what to invest time and energy and resources into. Um, okay. So let's get into it. So realtor hats on, we're about to sell a house. Quick little brainstorming rules, please defer judgment, encourage wild ideas. Again, stay focused on topic, build on the ideas of others. I know that we're all uh, in this world and respectful of each other. So I don't, I'm not gonna walk through all these, but uh, a good idea maybe to think about when you're doing it alongside your team, just to put some ground rules in place that everybody, uh, it's a yes and kind of uh environment. So back to that framework that Stacy introduced earlier, a seller's lifestyle. So again, we're going to try to not just stay focused in the re real estate world of, you know, should I put my, uh, my advertisement on a, uh, a bus bench by the corner? Let's not go right to solution solving, but first start to think of the behaviors of why people sell. Okay, feel free to open up on the chat and, and start to drop things into what are uh, reasons people have sold homes, apartments, or condos before. Also, we know that the general chat is disabled, but if you can uh, drop in just in the Q&A section, we are able to see that, and then we're going to start reading them out loud. Marriage. Awesome. Yes, exactly. Location move, that can be for work, that can be out of personal that you want to do it. Perfect, perfect. Here, I'm just going to try to get out of your way so we can know. Have a child would like more space. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Great, sorry, we're tag teaming on one computer here. You guys are too smart at this. You're going too fast. <laughs> Growing family, need more space. Perfect, need a bigger home, similar in vain. Ooh, school districts. Yeah. Great. Oh, I love the idea on the other side of the spectrum. So here we had marriage and growing families, but now empty nesters, again, downsizing perhaps in that, in that world. Oh, these are great. Yeah, these are fantastic. Divorce. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Better school district. Yep. New job, new location. Mm -hmm. Great. <laughs> No oh. new parents. Great. Oh, smart too. An income property. So seeing it more as an investment than perhaps exactly where they'll live. Um, and then on the other side of that, you know, the, the current situation that they're in, they no longer afford. These are great. These are fantastic. Budget, budget change. change. Yep. I think that's lifestyle change. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of the name with the affording house. Yep. Lifestyle change, starting a business, need the money. Okay. Yep. Great. Seller for finance, real estate agents making. Oh, so on the on the real estate side, being a profitable uh, career. Mm -hmm. Oh, want more outdoor space? Man, that happened uh, after COVID, right? We all needed a little bit more space, not only inside, but hoping for some outdoors. Bad neighbors. You said, ha ha, but I bet. I, I, I know people who do that. <laughs> yep. You absolutely needed to. Oh, goodness. Um, awesome. These, These are, are terrific. These are terrific. 
Um, and luckily you guys are brilliant and actually uh, came up with one of the ones that we were hoping someone would say that idea of upsizing for family growth. So again, you know, it came up in different kinds of ways that they, you know, got married, had more children, um, and, and needed more space. So in this, once we start to identify that pattern, so again, that driving behavior at that lifestyle level versus at the you know solution level, um, we start to see things exactly as we did just right here, which is there's a pattern of people that would be selling or buying because they need more room to continue to grow their family and or they're just on top of each other. So some interesting psychographics that we start to hear in those qualitative research sessions that Stacy was talking to are, um, these kids are getting bigger and can't share a room any longer. I think everyone would sleep better if everyone had their own rooms. Um, I try my best to only buy the most natural organic things for my family. Our collective health is important. So again, those psychographics, we start to go beyond just the physical space of the house, because clearly if you're buying um, natural or organic, that's a part of your lifestyle. And that's the way you make choices around that. So intersecting all of those lifestyle behaviors is where we can start to really hone in on some differentiated ways to show up as realtors that resonate with the people that we're trying to seek uh, and convert into to, to ongoing customers. So with this idea of upsizing uh, for family growth, can we think of, you know, kind of double click a little bit further down on what might be some of the, the pain points or the behaviors within just upsizing for family growth? So um, someone earlier had said school district. Like, I think that would be another piece of this that that would be a lens that if you're upsizing for family that you wouldn't want to sacrifice on, that you'd most likely, I assume, want to also look at a great school. Um, but think of other things that might be a, a pain point for them or a driving behavior. Yeah. And I'll add on to that too. And um, try to think outside of just the need for selling their home, right? So like what's happening in their lifestyle? So probably running around constantly. I am like, carrying groceries in while my kids are like jumping all over me. And that's a pain point in my life. So we're going to get out of even just the household itself. But what are those moments in your day that are those big pain points in your lifestyle? Um, and then just again, a quick little reminder that we're going to use the Q&A um, to drop in your answers and we'll start reading them out in real time. Oh, yes. So um, new babies nursery is my old home office now that, again, COVID has changed so many lifestyles. So uh, can't work from home. This happened. Yes, I have no doubt. Um, commute to work, traffic unreliable, mm, CTA. Especially, again, if, you're, if you've got kiddos, there's even more schedules to be juggling with that. Safety. for our family and our kiddos mm -hmm. to feel safe. It's a great one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kids need more space. I just can't run around <laughs> in our living room any longer. Oh, the oh. general chat is now open. Either, oh, we got both. Her. Whichever one you would prefer to write in, we'll, we'll look at both. Um. Proximity to a park or playground. Yeah, great one. Building off of that. I need somewhere for my kids to be able to run around, burn some energy. These are great. Absolutely. Anything else coming to everybody's mind? Mm, yeah, I need to be close to the highway for easy access to work especially as we're all coming back into the office a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Anything come to mind in terms of um, that other intersection that we were talking about, that they care about natural or organic, which again, probably clues us into that they're, they're trying to offer their kids safety, security, well nutrition, like those are priorities to them. Um, safe neighborhood, traveling distance, close to public transit. Close, closer to kids' school so they don't, they don't have to take the bus. Yes, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And again, I, I think that also starts to get to one of those other pain points for the parents. Like I, I don't have enough time to drop my kids off uh, before I get to work and all of that. Oh, farmer's market, great idea. Especially again, if 
Those people like to eat a little bit more natural, organic, close to organic supermarkets. Man, you guys are really great at this. Parks and green space for kids and dogs. Want to be closer to grocery stores so it can cook more easily rather than packaged foods. Incredible. Yep, closer stores you sell organically. Amazing. Oh, mm. bike trail. Yeah, see, now we're getting it. These people are probably active. Yep. Amazing. Away from industrial areas. Mm, that's a great one. Forest preserves. These are great. Yeah. Oh, take care of parents. So need to be closer. Oh, community alignment. I love that. So volunteer opportunities in the outdoors. Mm. Dog friendly. Hey. Yeah, they want to, maybe they don't need a, when they get that more space, they want a pet now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say my kids have been asking for a pet forever. <laughs> and won't give up. Oh, that's a great one. Closer to gyms. Smart, smart. Oh, young community with young families. Wanting to, yeah, I want, I want kids, or I, I would like to have kids that are similar to my kids' age. Having a, people to play with. Amazing. Oh. Running clubs. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be more integrated mm -hmm. in my community. Oh my goodness. All so good. We got Great. one last post-it. Any last thought? Otherwise we'll, we can keep it moving. All right. Awesome. Hey. Oh. Oh, that was a great one. Let's church. add that one in. Um, in my church community. Mm -hmm. Great. Incredible. We filled it up. Oh, and have financial means for a better home. That's a great More one opportunity. too. opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Okay. So now we've done step one um, with like flying colors, <laughs> incredible job, everyone. Um, so like we said, so now we understand kind of the lifestyle traits, the driving behaviors. And so what we want to do is start to go outside of the industry that we're studying to see what other services or products solve for some of those lifestyle traits and driving behaviors that we've, we've, we've started to see within the patterns so that we can take inspiration from these and start to ideate within the real estate world. How could that translate? So we're going to, we're by design giving you one that's around messaging on the, on the far left loyalty and messaging. Then we have one in a digital touch point ex experience, uh, example, a service touch point example, and then like packaging and branding. And we did that by design so that we can recognize that this type of doing uh, of research really influences so many of the touch points in which we show up for our audience. So even if we're might be trying to solve for one goal within the project, doing this research really takes off the blinders and shows us a lot of opportunity to differentiate ourselves, not only from our competitors, but possibly even more importantly, to show up in multiple ways that the audience that we're trying to convert, attract and retain um, resonate with our brand and our experience uh, as an offering or service. So on the left, on the loyalty and messaging, um, during COVID, the New York Times actually created what was a scream line. And it's exactly <laughs> what it sounds like. It was for all of those parents and people and whoever in the world that was just, you know, falling apart at the seams a little bit, rightfully so, during some really stressful times, that it gave them a platform to just call in and scream and vent and uh, take it out on something or someone else that wasn't within their own circle. Um, digital touch point, this is a really uh, interesting addition to Home Depot's uh, kind of customer journey. I'm not sure if any of you have children and if you've been to the Home Depots that do those activities for kids inside the store, they might have simple bird boxes that you paint or whatnot, but 
a brilliant idea by them already to engage the children while the parents shop and to give them a, a draw to come into Home Depot versus Lowe's or Ace or any of the other locations that might not have that service. Well, they took it even one step further. And now they actually have, well, you know, from Home Depot uh, URL to in real life. Uh, but this is actually a digital touch point where the um, kiddos can be building kind of virtual cities. They can build things within um, the their ecosystem that they're building. But the nice piece about it is then once they play on that app, of course, the Home Depot still wants you to come in to the store. So there's codes and discounts that are opened once you kind of get through these uh, virtual steps. So again, really trying to interact with these people on multiple channels. Um, this other one is a service touch point. So uh, you know, there's the Instacarts of the world and all of those kind of time savings around food prep or food grocery shopping. Um, but Walmart has taken it one step further and will even uh, deliver it directly into your fridge. So again, with all of the technology of ring doorbells or if you're home, uh, they will take the, the burden of that off of your plate. Um, last but not least, a packaging and branding product piece here. So this is a uh, subscription system. So it's, again, running in the background. So you don't have to think about it, especially when you are a new mom and are probably time starved, sleep deprived, all of those pieces. Um, this is targeted at women that have um, 12 months post birth with products and experiences that those new mothers will appreciate at those milestones and um uh, trigger moments throughout that uh, new mom experience. So introducing new products that they might not even know exist, but that they will need at those different times throughout their journey. So they, by design, are very varied. They are outside of the real estate uh, industry by design. And this is can be a tricky part of us trying to connect the dots. But again, these are just to serve inspiration for us. So if we take those outside in ide ideations, and then we take some of the, the concepts that we had before around this upsizing um, parents, so these driving behaviors, what can we take as inspiration around these to solve for some of those pain points with that upsizing family. So again, feel free to go ahead and start to drop things into the either the chat or the Q&A and we'll start to organize them here. But what are ways that we can, as a real estate agent, entice a seller looking to upsize for their family based on this? <laughs> Someone loved the primal screen, laughing out loud. <laughs> uh, many people, I'm sure at this point, wish they would have known about it back in, in COVID. I but... know, I wish I knew. Anything coming to mind, inspiration about what this is solving these other services for? And take a little bit of time here. We're asking some bigger questions, right? Like trying to connect all of these dots and think outside of the box. And um, I think, oh, go ahead. I just had a thought and I, I'll plant one in the, in, the, in the chat, but that Home Depot, kids thing made me think about, you know, maybe there's a, a, a way for realtors to build something that the kids can like redecorate their own bedroom virtually, right? So like how cool that they get to feel part of the process, get excited about the move. Um, and at the same time, it's not in real life that they're painting their actual walls. So that, and again, it helps with uh, keeping them distracted. Oh, make a door knocker as a, hmm, I like that. Entertainment engagement. Ooh, I'm gonna, yeah, I that, that feels in line with kind of a, the kid redecorating. Are there other ways to entertain or engage either the children of the group, the, the husband or wife of the group or wife and wife, husband, husband, partners, whoever it might be? It is kind of interesting to think of, again, as a real estate agent, that one of my selling points would be that I create these experiences during the open house that like engages mm -hmm. kids. Like maybe there's like a craft area that I always set up and like parents always know that I'm the realtor I love that. to go to knowing that like my kids are going to be taken care of while I am looking around the house. Love that. It's sparking some ideas. Oh, I love this. Create a play date group. How awesome would that be? So if, if the parents are going to look at open houses, how can the realtor help organize play date groups to keep them, bring a toy for the kid when you meet with the parents so the kid is entertained? Amazing. 
a playhouse in the house you were having the parents look at. Oh yeah. So stage it so that they can see their, their kiddos in that setting and enjoy it. Oh, that's a great one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything around this convenience. So this Walmart convenience, I don't know about you, but whenever I move, I, I don't know up from down. I don't have enough time. I don't know how I'm going to move everything. So is there stuff around that, around convenience or time saving that um, realtors could show up to at ease or to give time back or to help in ways like that? Any ideas come to mind? Ooh, almost like a, I wish that I had a realtor who gave me just like a list of, hey, here are the things that you might need on day one when like you haven't brought food, like you haven't gone to the grocery store yeah. yet, but like, here are the staples just to have yeah. on yeah. day one. Yeah. Like the shower curtain, you never remember you need. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Ooh, give them a basket with coupons. Okay. That's like a nice extension, right? So beyond that they can start to leverage that after they get, and that, how fun would that be to be in like places that are new and local to their home is probably what you are also getting at virtual tour before the actual tour of course man don't waste my time if i if i can see it ahead of time and it's not the right fit or if it gets me excited sure absolutely our realtor gave us a bucket with cleaning supplies and a mop it was really adorable again it's cuz it's solved for a need that you had that's awesome list of stores parks municipality information amazing how great would that list of good schools? Yeah, all the information. So those those solutions that you're coming to, I'm adoring because it's, again, it's saving those parents, those partners, the caretakers, the time to have to research all of this. At least it's a starting point. Um, and then that is such peace of mind, right? Have Instacart deliver food staples. Incredible. That's a great one. Oh, give the gift card for the dinner for the first night. Oh, how fun is that? Again, saving them time, making all of that mental noise of, oh gosh, what are we going to feed them? But also introducing them to something fun and new in their new neighborhood. That's great. Incredible. Next door community. Oh, sign them up on, at the, the next door app and get them all organized on that. Great. Um, we had talked about in the uh, the lifestyle that they probably have a dog or if they don't yet, they're like on the verge of it and they're like looking for parks. So maybe there's also like a, like a map of all of the parks in the neighborhood of like where to bring your dog um, or even like a, um, like maybe we just give them like a picnic basket, like kit yeah. to encourage them to like, we know you move to this new neighborhood for parks. and Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm building off of that Instacart. Yeah. And how do you take it a step further and get the, like, the organic local grocery store or give them, because when we heard that they like natural organic or building up those other ideas that you all had, maybe there's a map of where the farmer's markets are, things like that. Mm. That's great. The, the other thing that comes to mind um, is, you know, when I'm, oh, Oh, welcome to the neighborhood, buddy. A friend neighbor they can get in contact with. I love that. Ooh, man, I wish I would have gotten this. Partner with a snow removal or landscaper for a year of discount service. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. Right? All the all those things that we don't have time or energy or desire to want to do, which snow removal would be on the top of my list mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. That makes me think of what are other services around the moving time. I love that that's like an extension too. That's great with the snow removal, but are there other moments within that moving? You know, I, I would imagine I I'm not a mother myself, but just packing for myself, look, like the burden of looking at all that mm -hmm. I have to pack and knowing that would, that would be twofold, threefold, fourfold, depending on the kiddos. Maybe there's some interesting ideation around that, that we help them solve for the actual, just, uh Oh, there's a lot to pack up. Anything come to mind for everybody? Maybe there's like some sort of like moving concierge. Mm. Oh, like a wedding planner, but it's for moving. Mm. So they're like, there's logistics taken care of. There's timing, there's partners to build off of this other idea, like partners to 
get discounts with like those pods or something, but they're introducing all of those transactions and points with you. Anything else coming up? Great. Awesome. This is incredible. Okay, I'm gonna pull just yeah. a couple of random ones. We'll move to the next page. Oh, we have one more. Oh yeah, a gift certificate for an organizer who packs up homes. Yeah, this idea of services that they partner with, incredible. I would just be over the moon for something like that. Well, I think what's interesting about seeing all of these and hearing all of these is that I don't know about all of you, but I did not have a realtor mm -hmm. who did any of these things. And talk about like even just one of these being a small differentiator that could help that realtor, your business that you just created, <laughs> um, stand out from the competition, right? And if that word gets around that like you need to use this realtor because guess what? They are having Instacart deliver all of our food staples the mm -hmm. day that we move in. Like it's a small touch point, but that can be a really meaningful, impactful one that can take a business in a in a really strong direction. And and to build on that, the reason it can take a business in a really strong direction, besides it being so differentiated, is it goes back to its souls and need that that audience has, right? So that that idea of not coming home, you're exhausted, and then there's nothing in the fridge to eat. That's a real pain point. As opposed to, you know, the typical, here's a keychain for your keys or a bottle of champagne. Not that that's not generous, but it's not actually solving a, a pain point I have. So the, the, the level of stepping this up and going further by really observing and doing this process so that you can show up in ways that stick with people because they don't forget that you are a hero mm -hmm. in some small or large way by solving a need that I had. Um, Rachel said that her realtor drove her to work one day after a showing and just like how meaningful that was. I will say to build on that outside of the realtor space. But when I was a little kid, I remember still to this day, this is probably 20 years ago, that my parents were car shopping and my mom and I had an appointment and my dad was still in his car shopping mode. <laughs> and, um, the, re the car dealer or the salesman actually was like, Don, why don't you stay here? And he took my mom and I and drove us home so that wow. we could make our appointment. And my parents stuck with that car dealer yeah. for years after that. So again, it's like such a small little, little moment, little touch point, but to Rachel, your point, like you will never forget that. Mm -hmm. And it becomes the thing that people can't help, but talk about that becomes then the recommendation, the referral. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Great. So um, if you recall, when we were saying it, it, it in this process, a lot of it's about quantity at some point, right? It's just about all ideas are good. Yes. And gather, gather, gather. Then this becomes the moment where we get to be a little bit more intentional because before we start spending time, money, and energy towards something, we want to really have an understanding of the impact it's going to have. But the beautiful thing is doing it in this process it's all still just in digital pixels or on a post-it note. So there's no risk in creating a lot of ideas because it doesn't mean we're going to start to have to do all of that. This is the time that we start to filter through to see, okay, what would be really effective in this process? So you'll see on our axes, we have value and effort. So on the left-hand side, the value is how impactful will this be for the audience that we serve? So on the one end, low, on the other side, high. So going to Rachel's point again, never forgetting it. So those are the moments we really want to find. How will we really in, uh, leave an impression on our audience? On the other axis is effort. So easy or hard on both sides of the spectrum. And that's more internal looking. So if the other value is how externally, how it impacts the audience we serve, this is looking at our operations, our team, the feasibility of pulling this off. So easy meaning we could start doing it even tomorrow. Maybe it's about social media posts, like so free, just need to start to create the content. Let's get going. Versus hard, which is, you know, maybe that app that I was describing where kiddos can redesign something like that's going to take a little bit more time and a little bit more energy and money to build. But we want to still just map them all so that we can start to put together a roadmap of what we want to start to implement. So let's do this together and decide. So the tool for kiddos to redirect the, oh, I kind of 
know, led with this one. No, that's okay. Uh, that's a great example. Their future room and occupy them during an open house. Um, so obviously it's a little bit on the harder side because there will be time and investment involved. But what do we think the value of from low to high of that impacting? Do we, I, it's going to be a little hard to communicate that over okay. chat. Yeah, feel so free to drop into chat, which quadrant maybe you see this concept landing in. Yeah. I Starting have... your realtor business tomorrow. High and hard, but do we think it's low on the impact, middle of the road, higher on the impact externally to our to our sellers and buyers? Where do we think? Anybody want to weigh in? I know that you guys have thoughts. <laughs> There's been a lot of thoughts up until now. All right. We, 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 everyone's going quiet on us. All right. So we'll, I'm going to say it's like yeah. middle-ish, yeah. but high and hard okay. over there. I think that one's a <laughs> definitely high value. So maybe we push it up a little further bit. up, but yeah, thinking about making a tool to redecorate. High value. Be, Someone just said, great. Thank yeah. you, Izzy. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Like you need a developer, you need a designer, you need yeah. somebody who's going to translate it maybe into an app or something. Yeah. This next one is, I, I think, a really great uh, kind of other side of the spectrum. List of staple foods and toiletries you need on day one. So again, that makes me think of the, the mop and the cleaning supplies yeah. someone got. The, uh, uh, like, what are the things that you need? So if we think this is in terms of value, is this, again, solving for them, not low hanging fruit? Yeah, absolutely. I think easy to start executing takes a little bit of time for your team to brainstorm around what those pieces are that you've observed or for, felt firsthand that you need. And then, yeah, just gathering it on some sort of, you know, PDF that you can send people printing it out. Um, what do we think the, like, look, the value of it is? Is it in the jewels box that it really makes an impression? People are saying kind of more low hanging fruit. Perfect. I hear that. I think it's low value since it's generic. Okay. Oh, someone else says jewels. All right. So we'll put it kind of square in the middle. Perfect. There we go. Again, low, low investment of time and energy, um, but might start to stand out. A playhouse in the in the house you are having the parents look at. Okay. So yeah, building out some experiences where they can really start to picture their their future family there playing. What does that feel like from an effort standpoint? I feel like the effort is, it's definitely harder than the list. Yep. But it can also be as simple as like going onto Amazon. Yeah. And just buying the playhouse. And it's just a matter of carrying it around with you. I also feel like this is uh, kind of an example of many things that you could do yeah. to, to really help them envision themselves there. So that craft table that you were talking about, like that couldn't, that's not too much um, in the playroom area. Mm -hmm. I think there's lots of things that we could versatile of making it either higher, uh, higher effort or lower effort, but still with the goal of allowing them to see their future kiddos doing fun things there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think low hanging fruit. Perfect. Love it. A moving concierge, wedding planner for moving with partners, introductions. Yeah, this is this is a big one because I, I could see, I could imagine so many different parts of that customer journey having partner introductions. So whether it's the GC who's going to help bring your, you know, your new vision of your kitchen to life or the, the packing that someone talked about or um, the landscape, like this could, that you could have quite the, portfolio of partners. What do we, high value. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. High and hard. Yeah. High value. value. Agreed. 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 Yeah. Don't think it's as hard as that digital tool. It's starting to yeah. make connections. So maybe I agree. Maybe this is one of our jewels. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be quite the differentiator. I would remember it if someone had mm -hmm. trusted partners of plumbers and landscapers and movers for me. Gosh, the amount of time mm -hmm. and trust that you would earn on that too. We also just like don't know, you know, when you move into a new area, you don't know who's the good electrician or mm -hmm. who's the good painter. And so to be able to have those partnerships and 
if you're already building the trust as the realtor, I feel like that could go a long way. Amazing. Okay. So last but not least, this is uh, the steps that we'll ask uh, all of you to try and uh, with your teams, with yourself, and kind of switch this back into your own world, but not too close to your own world that you, you forget to ideate beyond and around the lifestyle. So again, it's really just three steps. Um, really looking at the audience that you serve and starting to unpack those those motivators and those behaviors of their lifestyle around why they're making decisions versus just at the transaction of interacting with you or right within that industry, but look beyond that. Um, bonus points to have convos with actual prospects to find this info out. So again, if you start to do a bit of research with people that have chose you, people that are prospects, people that might've gone a different direction to see what was the motivations behind that, that made that decision. Get, again, at that time, it's about gathering volume and seeing where there's overlap, starting to see where there's patterns amongst what you're hearing. Then step two is thinking of inspiration out in the world, other services and products. Again, if you have conversations with them earlier, ask them about this. Are they using Weight Watchers? Do they use Instacart? And again, is it a time saving? Is it the accountability that we heard from Weight Watchers and being able to physically see the tracking um, so that they saw the, 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 the progress they were having? Um, and then when you're out in the world yourself, think about what services you use. I, I saw Stacy drinking her Starbucks coffee and I guarantee she used their app mm -hmm. so that she could just run in and pick it up and go. So like the seamlessness that that has created, right? What are the other things you and others around you use in uh, outside in, uh, ideation? And the bonus points here is if you keep a list of these over time to reference back to, it's amazing. Uh, you think you'll always remember them because they're impressionable, but once you start doing this quite often, there's so many good ideas and they keep adding on. So just start a Google sheet or an Excel and just start to organize them there. Um, can I build on that? Yes, too? please. Um, there is a lot, like we have a, um, an act, act every single morning, Faith and I kind of sit down and we open up a wide array of, um, of websites just to be inspired by for the day. And then to that point, we make our list of things that just are kind of in the back of our mind whenever we might need it. And some of those that have really been great inspirations for us, mm -hmm. we almost always open Fast Company, especially Fast Company Design. There are just crazy companies out there doing crazy things. And sometimes, a lot of times, those businesses don't always make it, but there is something to be learned about what they are doing or the way that they're showing up for their audience that really can drive and inspire. Um, so definitely add Fast Company to your mm -hmm. list if you don't have it um, already. What are some of the other like big ones that we... Oh my goodness. I feel like there's so many. Um, I mean, we also do, you know, Chicago based ones just to see what are happening in this, in this, uh, kind of proximity, because that also is really, uh, inherent of the trends that are coming about. Um, so block Chicago, um, even like the Chicago innovation, yeah. like the awards and who is getting the awards, why are they getting them this year? Um, yeah. So definitely encourage you to kind of, if you, whenever you need that little spark, or you might have two minutes of downtime while you're waiting for um, a coffee date to show up just to like open up some of these and just see what else is happening outside of your industry to be inspired by. And so now that we have those motivators from the step one, and there's a, a, a lot, a lot of variety, again, pick some of those, you know, ideation inspiring companies that are happening and start to see, is there some way that these things connect? And what does that mean for my product, my service, my organization, and start to just concept around those. And again, that's still another point where it's wide and breadth is the, the name of the game quantity, quantity, quantity. So that when you get to the step three, you can start to organize them just like we did, where it might be high or hard, but it might be jewels. It might be low hanging fruit, but man, we could start doing it tomorrow. Um, and then there will be some ideas that land in that bottom right quadrant, the drop. And that's okay. It's amazing when it's still just a post-it or a pixel on a computer, because 
it, it was no risk to us. It took a little bit of brainstorming time and that's all it cost us. Mm -hmm. So again, starting to organize these and then put them into action, start to put some guardrails around, you know, in Q1 of next year, we want to, you know, do three of these or whatever it might be that's feasible for you and your team um, to start to implement and see what traction you get in showing up in a different way around the needs that your audience have versus what we might think they have. Mm -hmm. um, bonus points. We really mean this. Uh, uh, we'll show you on our next slide how you can get in touch with us, but feel free to connect with us. We love geeking out over this and brainstorming and thinking through new and different ways to differentiate yourself. Um, so feel free to reach out to us and we can talk about this over a, a little virtual coffee. Um, so you can find us. Here's our email. We're also on LinkedIn mm -hmm. um, under Pinpoint Collective. We're on Instagram at Pinpoint Collective. Um, yeah. With that, we'd love to just open up uh, a little bit of the remaining time for any questions, thoughts, comments, and free, feel free to use the Q&A if you want to um, ask a question there and we can answer it live. Um, or also feel free to raise your digital hand too and we can, um, we would love to hear your voice. It feels like we've been talking <laughs> at you all for an hour. Yes, so. We have. Yes. Any other last questions, thoughts? No one has raised their hands yet. Perfect. Thank you, Stella. Thank you, Shirley. Oh, yes. Thank you, Shirley. Do you all feel like there was a little something here that you could take and start to implement tomorrow within your own businesses? We hope. <laughs> I mean, we would love to hear. Um, oh, yes. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Rachel. Okay. Absolutely. Good. Thank you, Stephen. Nobody. Oh, there we go. We have a hand. Regina has our hand up. Regina, let's hear it. Regina, you have been on. Go ahead. Yes. Um, this was very interesting. Um, we I have a meeting with my partners on Sunday, so I will definitely be bringing this process to them to try and think outside the box and figure out how do we reach the market that we want to reach and not just stay within our four corners, but go outside. So this gave me a lot to think about. Thanks for having this workshop. Oh, thank so you, glad. Regina. Um, it it is, it, it is never shocking to us, including ourselves, how quickly we put our own blinders on because yeah. we're so busy. We're making, you know, we have decision fatigue is, you know, um, roles within our organization. So it's really refreshing. And I love that you can step back with your, your partners and say, let's just think differently for a little bit and see what opportunities we might be missing. Cause it is, it is always uh, surprising how quickly we can get narrowed in on what we think they might want. And, and, and that, not that those are wrong, but there, there might be opportunities that we're, we're, we're leaving on the table. Um, let's see, really great framework for getting inside the mind of consumer. Yep. I, uh, oh, the prioritized concept was huge. Yes, that's great. very helpful and valuable. I do feel like remembering I need to put more effort in my clients is good for me. Sometimes I get so caught up in the work. Yep. Yep. Totally relate to that as well. Oh, interesting, Paula. Opening up a traveling nurse rental. You know, Especially in these moments where I feel like you are in this aha moment right now, right? Um, the ability to go out and talk to not only some nurses who have been through the traveling nurse program, um, but even just like travelers who are using Airbnb and like, what are the small things that made a difference for them? Or like thinking back into your own Airbnb, your travel experiences, like what are the little touch points that mm -hmm. kind of stand out for you? Um, is like such an incredible moment right now in your business journey. So we wish you so much luck for that. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Incredible. Any other questions? Uh, I think you went, we can barely hear you. Say something now. Uh, Can't hear you. That, Are you guys talking? Um, Let's set up a meeting with me and you. Okay. Like, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, more, 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 more. <laughs> oh, opening a karaoke. No one else has their hand raised. I want us to have a plan for the planning. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Actually, for
for for your time today. Um, again, you you can feel free to get in touch with us yeah. uh, if other questions come up or you're you, as you think outside the box, which seems to be a pattern that we're hearing, which we love to hear. Um, we're we're here, we're available, and we'd love to connect and and hear about these exciting uh, opportunities that you're either just starting to venture out on or or have been doing for a bit and need to maybe think a bit differently. Yeah. Yeah, like Faith said, we are always up for a coffee talk, so please take advantage of that. Thank you, Stacey and Faith, for today's presentation. If you are a part of the BACP Entrepreneur Certificate Program and would like to receive credit for today's webinar, please log on to chicago.gov forward slash BACP certificate. Again, that's chicago.gov forward slash BACP certificate. A copy of this webinar will be posted on our YouTube page at youtube.com forward slash Chicago BACP. Um, and that's it for today. So happy holidays. Holidays is almost here. And enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. But like